basically daily updates here. Uh, definitely very busy uh, storm pattern here. We've got a storm coming Sunday night into Monday, and another one midweek. We're not going to talk about the midweek one yet. Um, just uh, too much to focus on in the near term. Uh, we'll get there uh, as we get closer. But for now, we're going to talk about the storm that's coming Sunday night into Monday. Uh, not a huge storm, a real quick mover. Could snow pretty heavy for a while. Most of us are going to be mostly snow. There is going to be a little bit of mixing, I think. Um, and also, just wanted to kind of uh, talk a little bit about the last storm. I feel like a real, uh, real dud on my end. Um, it was a dud on a lot of forecasters. And one thing I've uh, been thinking about a little bit over the last day: why did, why did I not pick up on what needed to happen? Um, I think part of my problem here lately, I've been excited to get uh, lots of graphics out to you to try to explain what's happening better, but um, I only have a limited amount of time that I spend on this kind of stuff. And so uh, graphics take time to build, um, but they also, and usually what they're taking time away from is me actually looking at the forecast and trying to focus on that. So um, I'm still going to do the graphics, but I'm going to try to spend a little bit more time focusing on what's going on, not trying to just say, hey, this looks like about what I feel like is going to happen, but get a little bit more into the nitty gritty of the forecasting and stuff like that. Everybody's going to learn. we got to figure out what we're doing as we're going forward. So hopefully, uh, and sometimes you're going to miss. That's just the reality of forecasting. Um, the models miss. Uh, humans miss. Sometimes we miss together, sometimes separately, whatever. But I, sh I, think, I feel like I should have seen the warm nose coming and the uh, more sleep than expected out of the last storm. And even the um, lack of accumulating snow on the backside yesterday. That was actually just as frustrating to me. Um, that the moisture was there, but the, the lift and the, the right temperatures and things like that weren't there in the middle of the atmosphere. And that's stuff I didn't do a great job checking out. So just trying to be uh, honest with you. Why do we miss sometimes as forecasters? Um, there's a lot of reasons, but uh, I feel like yesterday I should have seen that one coming, and I didn't, and uh, that annoys me. Um, so to personally, not, not you know, it is what it is. But anyway, hopefully we're not going to do that with this storm. We're going to try. So I have to spend a little bit more time getting into the nitty-gritty of things, um, which is really what I enjoy about the forecasting anyway. Um, but, you know, I try to do a good job of communicating that to you, so that's why the different graphics, and I feel like they do help. But, um, again, I've got to re deal with the re limited reality of uh, how much time and things like that I've got. So what's going on across the country? Here is a piece of upper-level energy um, that is a dipping across, and we're getting for the first time really in a long time, we're going to get a storm that develops along the Gulf Coast here, and that, that rides up along the East Coast, kind of a classic nor'easter track. Now, a couple things that aren't going to make this into a blockbuster storm. Um, one, no blocking high to our north to slow things down. The pattern is very progressive, and the big thing is this is going to move fast. Not, another thing, no real cold air across Canada to really help um, uh, to really help drive cold air south, um, which is why we could see some sleet in a few places, uh, I think, out of this system, although this system should be much more snow than sleet out of the last one. And I think the sleet won't be as long-lasting, and we will definitely all start as snow. Um, there's just a chance at the height of the storm of uh, mixing with sleet, I think, in a few places. Uh, looking at all the that all that stuff in the mid-levels that I missed the other day. Okay, so you can see we're starting to gather some energy, uh, things down here. The storm is going to get going today, and then it's going to race north and east, but it's going to take a basically pretty classic track as we head forward. Uh, let's look at that radar. Here you can see this system's still kind of diving to the east, and it's basically just the kicking off energy uh, for creating um, along this front that's sort of a left over little boundary layer or, or area that's going to be where we create our um, new storm. And like I said, it's going to start to head kind of up the spine of the greens, and then it's going to shift offshore and head up across uh, the northeast in a pretty, like I said, classic nor'easter fashion. It's not going to be a super strong storm, even though it takes a classic track, and it's not going to have that blocking high and the cold air to the north. So not going to be a huge snowmaker, but um, definitely at least uh, we haven't seen a track like this really all winter. Even the big snowstorm we got in uh, back in uh, December was not a classic track at all. It was sort of an inland and then a redevelopment and all sorts of things like that. Uh, that storm ended up being a big snow producer, which you can get out of the non-classic nor'easter, but this is more of the classic track. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, yeah, let's take a look first at the Further away track, then we'll get into the close-in track, some of the details as we go forward. So here, uh, overnight tonight, storm's really kind of getting going here over the southern, uh, basically over New Orleans, areas like that. Uh, tries to kind of head up the spine of the Appalachians. That's a pretty normal thing. Basically transfers energy off the coast of the Virginias. Uh, again, pretty classic for a nor'easter. Um, oftentimes they transfer and you get redevelopment somewhere down in here. This one's maybe a little bit further north than you'd normally get. Uh, and then so that by Sunday overnight, while we're already snowing, storms just off the New Jersey coast, and then it takes a, a track close to the New England, southern New England coastline, and out to sea. Again, for us, not so much for Boston or areas like that, coastal New England, but for us, this is pretty much a, uh, this is basically exactly what you'd be looking for, for a snow track with this. What is happening, though, is as you can notice, we start Saturday overnight, where a uh, low pressure system is uh, in New Orleans, Monday midday, so about uh, um, 36 hours later, 
um, <laughs> the storm is headed out to sea. So that tells you just how quickly things are going to get going. Overnight tonight, um, the storm will just really, really be getting going here down to the south. We'll be snowing by by nightfall on Sunday, and by Monday midday, our snow is wrapped up as a storm, except for maybe some leftover flurries. So that just kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. Um, the track, the, the close-up track, here's some minor differences. Basically, in the way that the models want to take, there's a slightly closer to the coast um, track. This track here is definitely where the sleet threat comes in, and that's not a sleet threat for everybody. I think that's a sleet threat basically for the southern valleys of Brattleboro, Bennington areas, and a little points further north. i got a map that will show you where I think that's going to happen. Um, if we stay with this uh, southern route, um, we're going to be uh, a little bit cooler. Those areas I don't think get into the sleet if that happens, although we'll get a little bit less precipitation out of this one. Um, and already areas, uh, Rutland and Windsor counties, where I don't think there's really any chance of any sleet mixing in, those areas are going to be how much, how far is the northern fringe of the heavier precipitation going to go um, in terms of their snowfall totals. And again, nobody's getting a blockbuster storm out of this, but as you can see, the storm kind of races off to the northeast. It's sort of Either model run kind of reconsolidates everything in the Gulf of Maine and then heads out south of Nova Scotia by Monday midday. Let's take a look at where I think that sleet chance comes. It's basically, I think up to about Bellows Falls, maybe Springfield, uh, along the Connecticut River Valley, that you're going to get a little bit of warmer air trying to, trying to move in a loft in these areas. And basically Route 7, I think, up to Manchester has a chance to mix with sleet. This will not be a sleet out, though, I don't think. I don't think that's a problem at all with this system. We're definitely going to start as snow. Most of it will still fall as snow in these areas. You'll still get accumulating snow in both of these areas. But at the height of the storm, you may mix with sleet. If you don't mix with sleet, I don't think it actually changes your snowfall totals too much because that means the storm went a little further south and everybody stays snow, but it, the, uh, the amount of the water or liquid equivalent we get goes down a little bit with this uh, system. So uh, in terms of your overall snowfall forecast. Like I said, this is not a huge snow producer, but it is definitely a plowable snow. It will snow heavy for a little bit uh, Sunday night in, or Sunday into Monday, or like late Sunday night into early Monday morning. Um, so we're looking at a general three to six inches for most areas, um, two to four, um, because you mix with some sleet probably here in the southern parts of the Connecticut River Valley. And then north of that, we're just not getting that much precipitation. We're going to get a little shielded by the snow here as you head up uh, I-91 up into uh, basically up towards heading up towards like West Lebanon and White River Junction areas like that. Um, Route 7, basically to about Manchester, you get enough sleep, I think, that mixes in that that holds you back a little bit. You get a little shielded by the tectonics as well um, with this kind of a snowfall system. Uh, but I think 5 to 8 is the jackpot for the southern ski areas. Uh, again, not as much uh, precipitation overall for the ski areas north of that, so I think they still pop out about 6, 7 inches of snow maybe for a place like Okemo, Killington, same kind of thing. Whereas I think Stratton, Mount Snow, 8 maybe even nine inches for the ski areas. They tend to get, you know, they do a little bit better than everybody else here. But not a huge, not a huge snow producer, but certainly this could be a little bit pow more, not, it's not going to be powder still. We're still, there's just lots of cold air to really cause that to happen. But it will be fluffier than any snow we've really gotten all winter, I think. I don't think, um, probably still be able to make snowballs out of it, but it won't be sludge like we've mostly had this winter for most of us, I think, out of this system. Um, if we take a quick look at the details, snow starts between 7 and 9 p.m. on Sunday. So uh, basically through the early evening, I think you're fine driving-wise, but anytime if you're going to be out later on Sunday night, it starts to become problematic. Accumulating snow ends between 7 and 9 a.m. on Monday morning. We're looking at only about 12 hours of snow, which is why um, that's, it's not going to take, even if you get relatively heavy snow, it's not going to add up to that much because it's only about 12 hours of snow time, right? Even at half an inch an hour, which to average over 12 hours would be pretty heavy snow. Um, if you average half an inch an hour, that's only six inches of snow, which is why we're not getting giant totals out of this. Unless a really heavy band sets up, but there's nothing in the models that really indicates that might happen. So, you know, could we, could someplace end up with a foot of snow out of this if everything went right and we got into a real heavier, a heavier band than expected? Sure, but I don't think that's real likely at the moment. All right, snowfall is moderate to heavy, but short duration will hold a Accumulations. Now, some sleet may mix in in the Southern Valley locations. Um, I, I feel pretty confident that most of us won't see that much sleet um, unless things tick a little further north, but there's really no indication currently in the models that that's going to happen. So uh, I think despite everything that's been going on this year, I think uh, the sleet will mostly be held off. Just to our south, you get into Western Mass, Central Mass, certainly lots of sleet or rain mixed in, but I think uh, not too much of it here. Travel will be difficult Monday morning. School delays, definitely, um, but if, if things come to an end by 7 a.m. There's a chance that some of these uh, might just be delays. Cancellations are definitely possible though as well. So that's basically what we're looking at. Um, I'm going to try to get a quick forecast out to you in the middle of the day tomorrow. I mentioned um, Sunday morning, obviously I got church and then I'm taking my son uh, to a Bruins game. And so we're trying to leave by about one in the afternoon. So I might be able to get a quick forecast in between those two times 
tomorrow. Um, if I do, that'd be great. Um, it'll be probably a quick forecast, just a quick update. Um, I will be back on Monday morning at some point, probably later on Monday morning um, with my morning schedule and with uh, snow things going on and stuff like that. But uh, Monday morning with a look at your work week forecast. So uh, the goal is to get a forecast out each day. And then we're going to be starting to look at a system that's coming midweek. Um, and that system looks like uh, definitely a potential for a decent amount of snow again, but also mixing potential and all that kind of stuff once again. Okay. Uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for following me over this last week. Um, the forecast will keep coming until the weather gets a little quieter. It does look like after the next storm, we have a little bit of a slowdown in the weather. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel before, I'd encourage you to do so. It helps make sure you don't miss any of these videos, particularly when I'm putting them out every day. And I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. They help support what I do here. They help. Uh, they have helped over the years with me purchasing stuff to make the graphics look better, stuff like that. And uh, also with the equipment that I'm using, the light setup I've got, the microphones, the camera, all that kind of stuff. They help out with that. It really does make a big difference in what I can do. Um, and so, and also subscriptions to things like models and stuff like that. So anyways, they help out a lot with that. I want to give them a quick shout out. And uh, if you're interested in becoming a fight patron, there's a link in the description below. It talks about some of the benefits you get and uh, just talks about how I appreciate you as patrons. All right, we'll be back tomorrow, hopefully with a short forecast update. And then definitely on Monday, I'll be back tomorrow.